Today, mortgage stress was up again in May. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. We have released the May 2018 mortgage stress and default analysis today. Across Australia, more than 966,000 households are estimated now to be in mortgage stress, compared with last month's 963,000. This equates to 30.2% of unoccupied borrowing households. In addition, more than 22,600 of these are in severe stress, up 1,000 from last month. We estimate that more than 56,700 households risk 30-day default in the next 12 months. And we expect bank portfolio losses to be around 2.7 basis points, although losses in Western Australia are higher at 5 basis points. We continue to see the impact of flat wages growth, rising living costs and higher real mortgage rates. The pressure on households in a low income growth, highly leveraged environment means that overall risks in the system continue to rise. And while recent strengthening of lending standards will help to protect some new borrowers, there are many households currently holding loans which would not now be approved. In fact, the recent Royal Commission laid bare some of the industry practices which help to explain why stress is so high. This is a significant and sleeping problem and the risk in the system remain higher than many recognise. We continue to see the number of households rising and the quantum is economically significant. Even now, household debt continues to climb to ever new record levels. Mortgage lending is still growing at two to three times income. This is not sustainable and we're expecting lending growth to continue to moderate in the months ahead as underwriting standards are tightened and home prices fall further. The latest household debt to income ratio, according to the RBA, is a record 188.6. And the forces which are lifting mortgage stress remain largely the same. In cash flow terms, we see households having to cope with rising living costs, noticeably childcare, school fees, and fuel, whilst real incomes continue to fall and underemployment remains high. Households have larger mortgages thanks to the strong rise in home prices, especially in the main eastern state centres, and now prices are slipping. While mortgage interest rates remain quite low for owner-occupied borrowers, those with interest-only loans or investment loans have seen significant rises, and we expect some upward pressure on real mortgage rates in coming months as international funding pressures mount a potential for local rate rises and margin pressure on the banks, thanks to a higher bank bill swap rate. In fact, the potential for a 20 to 25 basis point hike by the banks is increasing, and this would lift the number of households in mortgage stress higher again. Our analysis uses the DFA core market model, which combines information from our 52,000 household surveys, public data from the RBA, ABS and APRA, and private data from lenders and aggregators. The data is current to the end of May 2018. We analyse household cash flow based on real incomes, outgoings and mortgage repayments rather than using an arbitrary 30% of income. Households are defined as stressed when the net income or cash flow does not cover the ongoing costs. They may or may not have access to other available assets and some have paid ahead but households in mild stress have little leeway in their cash flows whereas those in severe stress are unable to meet repayments from current income. In both cases, households manage this deficit by cutting back on spending, putting more on credit cards, and seeking to refinance, restructure, or sell the home. Those in severe stress are more likely to be seeking hardship assistance and are often forced to sell. Probably the default extends our mortgage stress analysis by overlaying economic indicators such as employment, future wage growth and CPI changes. And our core market model also examines the potential of portfolio risk of loss in basis points and value terms. Losses are likely to be higher among more affluent households, contrary to the popular belief that affluent households are well protected. Regional analysis shows that New South Wales has more than 264,000 households in stress, 
compared with 262,000 last month. Victoria has 272,000 households compared with 256,000 last month. And Queensland has 165,000 compared with 175,000 last month. And Western Australia has 129,000 households in distress. The probability of default over the next 12 months rose with around 10,600 in Western Australia, around 10,500 in Queensland, 14,200 in Victoria, and 15,000 in New South Wales. The largest financial losses relating to bank write-offs reside in New South Wales at $1.3 billion from unoccupied borrowers, and in Victoria, $951 million from unoccupied borrowers, which equates to 2.1 and 2.73 basis points respectively. Losses are likely to be highest in Western Australia at five basis points, which equates to $718 million from unoccupied borrowers. So now we're going to look in more detail at the most stressed postcodes across the country by counting down to the most stressed area in the country. In each case, we will dive into the vital statistics for each location, including population, income, mortgage and loan to income ratios, as well as the number of households in stress. So just outside the top 10 is Victorian postcode 3810 Pakenham, with around 4,310 households now in mortgage stress. It's some 54 kilometres southeast of Melbourne. The average home price is around $502,000 compared with 290,000 in 2010. And according to the latest census, the average age is 32 years, and there are more than 12,600 families in the district. The average monthly household income is around $5,900, which is below the average in the state as well as nationally. 46% of homes have a mortgage, compared with the Victorian average of 35%. And the average monthly repayment is $1,700, or more than 28% of their average incomes, but 11% are paying more than 30% of their income each month to service their mortgages. In 10th place is 3029, another Victorian postcode which includes Hooper's Crossing and Tarnit, around 25 kilometres from the centre of Melbourne. There are around 24,600 households in the district and the average household income is $6,840 a month. The average mortgage repayment is $1,730 or around 26% of the monthly budget, although 12.5% are paying more than 30% of their income on repayments. More than 80% of the dwellings are separate houses and a further 15% are townhouses. Nearly 51% of all properties in the area are mortgaged, compared with the Victorian average of 35%. The average home price is currently around $545,000 for a house and $378,000 for a unit, compared with $462,000 and $330,000 a year ago. Next we go to WA6030, which includes Clarkson, Meriwa and Tamla Park, 34 kilometres north of Perth. There are 4,597 households in mortgage stress in the area, which is home for around 11,000 households. The average age is 34 years. 86% of properties here are separate houses and 14% are townhouses. 51% of properties are mortgaged well above the Western Australian average of 40%. The average income each month is around $6,500 and the average monthly repayment is around $2,000. So the average proportion of income going on the mortgage is more than 28%. But more than 12% have repayments requiring more than 30% of income. Next, in eighth place, is yet another Victorian postcode 3350, which includes Ballarat and the surrounding areas. It's about 100 kilometres from Melbourne. In this region, there are 4,746 households in mortgage stress. The average property value is $315,000 compared with $281,000 in 2010. And there are more than 14,500 families in the area and the average age is 37 years, line ball with the average across the state. The average monthly income is $5,300, well below the national average and the state averages. Around 33% of households have a mortgage and the average repayment is $1,408 a month with the average loan to income ratio being 26.5%, although 5% are above 30%. In seventh place, we go to Queensland, 4350, around Drayton and Toowoomba, around 100 kilometres from Brisbane. There, about 27,000 households live in the region, and the average age is 37 years. 77% of properties here are standalone houses, and a further 15% are townhouses. We estimate that 5,054 households are in mortgage stress. The average home price is $470,000, compared with $382,000 in 2010. The average income is $5,300 a month, 
and around 30% have a mortgage, and the average mortgage repayment is 1,510, giving an average loan to income of just 25% and 4% only have mortgage commitments above 30% of income. Next, sixth, is 3037, which includes areas around Delahaye, Hillside and Sydenham, around 20 kilometres northwest of Melbourne. Here, 5,317 households are in mortgage stress. Of the 13,000 households in the district, more than half have a mortgage, and the average age is 33 years. The average home price is around $570,000, up from $365,000 in 2010. 80% of properties are standalone houses, and a further 18% are townhouses. The average monthly income is around $7,200, and the average mortgage repayment is $1,730, with an average loan to income of 24%, but 30% require more than 30% of their income to service their mortgages. In fifth place is another Victorian suburb, 3806 Berwick and Harkaway, which is around 40 kilometres southeast of Melbourne, with 5,461 households in mortgage stress. The average home price is $700,000, compared with $451,000 in 2010. There are around 13,000 families in the area, with an average age of 36 years, and 88% of properties in the area are standalone houses. More than 47% of households here have a mortgage, and the average repayment is $1,850 a month, compared with the average income of $7,600 a month, making the average loan to income about 24%. However, more than 9% are committed to paying more than 30% of their income each month. In fourth place, we go back to Victoria again, to 3805, which includes Narrow Warren and Fountain Gate. This area is around 38 kilometres southeast of Melbourne. Here, 5,900 households are in mortgage stress. The average home price is $620,000, compared with $366,000 in 2010. There are more than 15,000 families in the area, and the average age is 34 years. The average household income is just over $7,000 a month, which is higher than the national average. 54% of homes are mortgaged, and the average monthly repayment is $1,700, slightly below the national average of $1,755 a month. The average loan-to-income ratio is around 25%, but 12% are paying more than 30% of their income on the mortgage each month. Coming third, we cross the Nullarbor to Western Australia to 6065. This is the area around Wanneroo, including Tapping, Hopping and Lansdale, and is located about 25 kilometres north of Perth. It is an area of high population growth and residential construction, mainly on smallish lots. There are more than 6,340 households in mortgage stress in the region. The average home price is $420,000, compared with $529,000 in 2010, and down from a peak of $813,000 in 2014. There are around 17,000 households in the district, and the average age is 33 years. The average income is $8,300 a month, and 58% have a mortgage with average repayments of $2,170 a month, well above the Western Australian and national averages. The average loan-to-income ratio is around 26%, but more than 13% are paying over 30% of their income on the mortgages each month. In second spot is the area around Campbelltown in New South Wales, 2560, which is around 43 kilometres inland from Sydney. Here, 6,381 households are in mortgage stress, and the average home price is $640,000, up from $320,000 in 2010. Around 20,000 households live in the area with an average age of 34 years, and 80% of properties are standalone houses. The average income is $6,100 a month, 37% have a mortgage, and the average repayment is higher than the national average at $1,800, or 29% of income, but 13% are paying more than 30% of income on their mortgages. And so to the postcode with the highest count of stressed households. It is New South Wales postcode 2170 around Liverpool, Warwick Farm and Chipping Norton, which is 27 kilometres west of Sydney. There, around 27,000 families live in the area with an average age of 34 years. There are 6,974 households in mortgage stress here. The average home price is $805,000 compared with $385,000 in 2010. 64% of properties are standalone houses, while 22% are flats or apartments. The average income here is $5,950, and 36% have a mortgage, which is above the New South Wales average of 32%, and the average repayment is just about $2,000 each month, so the average proportion of income paid on the mortgage is more than 33%. So it's clear from this analysis that stress is residing among households who are relatively affluent but highly leveraged and includes a number of newly built, high-growth suburbs on the edge of our largest cities. 
Many are typified by high density standalone houses or townhouses crammed into small plots. We're seeing a rotation of stress towards some of the Victorian postcodes in recent months, but there are concerning rises in both New South Wales and Victoria. However, Western Australia remains the more immediate travel spot, as can be demonstrated by the higher levels of default, perhaps close to double the national average. We will continue to monitor mortgage stress and we'll update our core market model again next month. As before, I think it's worth repeating that many households in stress do not have a robust household budget and creating this is an important first step to getting to grips with stress. Whilst putting more on credit cards and refinancing may seem superficially attractive mitigation steps, our analysis shows that these are often only temporary fixes. Getting to grips with where the money is going is an important first step to tackling the problem. Remember too that banks have an obligation to assist in cases of hardship. So if households are in difficulty, they should talk to their lenders rather than hoping things will work out. Given the flat incomes and rising prices, this is unlikely. If you like what you've seen here today, please like the post and add a comment or a question. I do read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now. And if you have already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.